Okay, hi there. In this short revision video, let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the concept of the free rider problem. So in 1952, the famous economist William Bomol described for the first time the free rider problem. And essentially, it's a market failure in which those who benefit from a shared, often scarce resource, do not pay for them. In other words, there's a benefit they get, but they don't make a contribution to the cost. And the free rider problem uh, leads to under-provision of a good or service and thus can be a key cause, an important cause, of market failure. So essentially the problem occurs when people can benefit from a good or service without paying anything towards it. They have little incentive to reveal how much they're willing and able to pay, particularly for a public good, because they can actually get that benefit, a private benefit, without making a contribution to the cost. And oftentimes, for example, people can get away with making just a, a token contribution, something that's uh, well below their, o their own private benefit. And of course, if, if enough people can enjoy a good or service without paying for the cost, there's a big danger that in a free market, uh, where you need to make a profit, uh, the good will be underprovided or not provided at all. And this is the market failure in the sense that uh, pure public goods are not provided in part because of the free rider problem. There is a wider context, I think, to the free rider problem. It's just going to bring into this video some areas where you might want to, to use the concept. For example, open spaces, national parks, city parks, etc. Um, particularly relevant at the moment, of course, is lockdown measures ease. People want to access open spaces. They want to get a benefit from these uh, public spaces without necessarily being forced to contribute to the cost. Uh, big issues, of course, are people leaving huge amounts of litter, imposing costs on other people and uh, other organisations. Uh, I guess uh, quite a few people over the years have dodged fares. They've managed to take a ride on buses or trams or, or railways without making a contribution. So fare dodging can be counted as a free rider problem. But of course, if fare dodging is high, that in sense uh, transfers the cost to ticket payers, uh, people who ab abide by the regulations uh, because those costs have to be covered. Fly tipping, really good example of people waste dumping waste in farms and fields and urban areas. Uh, throw away society, fly tipping, throwing away stuff without contributing to the cost. Uh, actually, issues to do with uh, internet access, uh, you know, when councils and local authorities provide open access to free Wi-Fi, of course, one person's benefit can reduce what's available to somebody else. And then some wider issues, I think some issues of public policy, the whole question of tax evasion, which is illegal, and I suppose you could also say tax avoidance, which is legal. So entities such as corporations not paying their taxes, uh, in a sense, is a form of the free rider problem. Because if enough people uh, get the benefit of public services without paying for tax, without, without meeting their tax liabilities, that clearly puts extra pressure on other taxpayers. And the vaccination question, I think, is clearly very important now. And because for some people, there is the temptation to become a free rider. Imagine the conversation. I want the benefits of herd immunity from a national vaccination programme, but I'm going to let others get the jab, let them deal with the hassle and possible side effects and take on the perceived risks, whereas I get the benefit without making a contribution. So vaccine hesitancy and uh, people not taking up the, um, the offer of a vaccine, uh, I think, is, is, a, is a free rider issue in public health policy at the moment. So what can we do about it? How can we overcome potentially the free rider problem? Well, the obvious solution uh, with pure public goods, such as national defence and things, and flood defence systems and other pure public goods, is a system of compulsory taxation to fund collectively the provision of key services, including national defence systems. Second approach is to adopt a behavioural approach. Uh, I see the second and third options here are both behavioural, appealing to people's altruism and sense of social purpose. Uh, often, you, I mean, this is very hard, by the way, voluntary donations are rarely enough to provide c certain key public services. But that sense of altruism can, uh, can sometimes be quite powerful. And so too can community-based solutions. These are not necessarily enshrined in law, but it's where communities over time build up customs and social norms about how best to manage and um, protect 
and improve common pool resources such as fishing grounds and grazing land. The great Eleanor Ostrom, I'll post a link in the comment section of the video, Eleanor Ostrom did some amazing work on how to overcome the so-called tragedy of the commons, which is essentially a free rider problem. And of course, governments can tax, they can also legislate. So regulations enforceable in law, mandatory fishing quotas, for example, strong copyright and patent laws to protect people's intellectual property. The legal system can be an important way of partially overcoming the free rider problem. So look to see if you can include the concept of the free rider problem in your essays, assignments and papers. It's a problem in economics that simply will not go away, but it's an important one because in particular, it can lead to market failure. Okay, huge thanks. Stay safe, take care, and see you soon.